Right, so we've done uh, registering a new user. So we've got a new user on Backenders, and now let's see if we can log in this user. So basically we log in this user, and then after logging in this user, we take him to the main activity, which will be the starting activity of my app. So in the BTN login, if we click on login, so remember this is our screen, the user will enter his email address, enter his password, and then click on login. So if he clicks on login, we want to get his email address and his password. So let's do that first. So in the login, we're going to get his, uh, let's call it email equals etmail dot get text dot to string dot trim. So uh, here actually we should also ask the user first or just test if it's if it's not empty yet. So we're going to say if etmail dot get text dot to string dot trim dot is empty. Well, let's do that before the trim if it's empty. So if that one is empty or at the same time also ET password or not at the same time, whether that one or this one is true or both, doesn't matter. So we're going to say ET mail get text dot to string dot is empty or ET password dot get text dot to string dot is empty. So if any one of those two are empty, then obviously we cannot log in this guy. So then it's else. So if it's empty, we will show a toast and we'll say, please enter all fields. Right, but if it's not empty, it means that he's entered a username and a password. And now we can get that username and password. So I'm going to cut that there and we're going to use it inside of this else. Okay, so firstly, we get the email address. There's the email address and we can get the password. And that will be etpassword.gettext.toString and we can trim it. Right, so now we've got the email and the password and we want to now start logging the user in. So we're going to show the progress or we'll start showing the progress bar again so that uh, we can go into backend list and then retrieve what we want to retrieve uh, to see if we can log in this user. So we're going to say backend list service again dot login. And you can see there's login with the password, login with state login. Uh, there's an async callback and there's an async callback with state login. And this is the one that we want. So we're going to enter login first is basically the email address or the identity value. I'll show you now on the website how you can set the identity value. So that will be your identity value. In our case, it will be email address, then the password. Then you go into the background and then there's a, a last argument to let the user stay logged in. So that is when you've already got the user logged in and you don't want to ask the user for log his login details again. You just take him into the app. So that's essentially what we want to do. Okay, so the first argument there will be your login, which will be your email or your, uh, your identity value. Your second argument will be your password and that's the password we gathered from the user. The third argument is the new uh, async callback and I'm going to do that one now and the last one is whether you want this user to stay logged in or not and I'm going to set that one to true so it's easier to put it in now than right at the end so now in the third argument we're going to say new async callback and then it creates the rest for you so it's a bit more difficult to set this stay logged in true here so just do it before you do the async callback okay so basically what we're saying is Go to the user service and log in the user with this email address or this identity, this password. Go into the background and let me know. If it's done and everything is fine, we can let the user in. Otherwise, there was a fault. If there's a fault, we show the toast. We show error. And we can show that fault.get message again to just show what went wrong there. And then just remember to also stop showing your progress so i'm going to say false there okay so if there's a there's a problem we just say there's a problem and we stop from showing the progress bar then if everything went fine what should we do all right so we're going to start with a with a toast to show the user or tell the user uh, logged in successfully so he knows that everything is fine he's been logged in successfully and we will take him now to start activity. And we will have a new intent here. And we will start from the login activity, login.this, 
and we will move this user to register. No, not to register. We'll take him to what did we call it? Main activity. We'll take him to the main activity. Dot class. So if he's registered or logged in successfully, we'll show the toast login successfully and we'll take him to the main activity. Then also we can just go to the main activity and finish the main activity. Uh, sorry, not the main activity, the login, this login, this specific login page. So we'll have the login page close off when the login is successful and we take him then to the main activity. Now we can quickly test that if you run this application now. It will basically now go to, to back endless and then try to log in that user. So remember, my, I think my password was 12345, we'll see now. But basically we'll need to, to get exactly the same uh, email address that, that I had there, chuck at gmail.com. That's the one I need to log in with. Uh, so let's try that one. Not sure if it's done yet. Yes, it's done. So let me just use chuck at gmail.com. And now if I just click on login, you can see it will tell me please enter all fields. So let's enter the password. I think it was one, two, three, four, five. Let's add a six there, which means it's going to be wrong. So I'm going to say login. So it's trying to connect, authenticating, invalid login or password. So now I'm going to remove the last character there and just say login again. And now it should be fine and it should take me to the next activity, which is the main activity. Logged in successfully and there we are at the main activity. Now let's quickly, with this one, let's quickly do the uh, the reset password one. So remember we've got register, which takes him to the register activity. We've got now the login that logs in the user. But let's say the user has lost his password. How can we help the user to reset the password? So I'm going to go and say TV reset dot set on click listener. And we are inside of this one. So obviously... It's up to you how you want to do this, but you can let the user type his email address there and say forgot password. So I'm just going to take it from here, but you can pop up an alert dialog or something like that and ask the user for his email address where to reset the password. For this example, I will just get the email address from etmail. So let's go back to login and we'll say string. Or well, let's just first test if uh, etmail dot get text dot to string dot is empty uh, we will tell the user please enter your email address in the email field okay so if he did that that will be the else we've got something entered there we will now try and send a password reset for the user using that email address so let's just get the email so the email will be email dot get text dot to string and we can use the trim method again okay so now we have an email address and that email address will use to reset the password so now in this case we're going to start showing the progress bar again and then we will go into the background so we go to back endless dot user service again dot restore uh, let me just see the restore password and you can see there's two this one is for Java this one is for Android so we're going to use string identity and then the async callback again the identity uh, in this case it's the email address so we're going to pass in email there and then for the second argument new async callback and it creates the rest for you so basically what this hap what this also is doing is it's sending a password reset now to this specific email address or this identity and then it goes into the background and tells you when it's done either with a response that's fine the password reset has been sent or with handle fault for example that email address doesn't exist or it's not a valid email address or whatever so if there's a fault again we're going to say toast and we'll say error let's get the message there so i'm going to say fault dot get message so uh, we get that message there with the fault and we stop showing the progress bar. So we're going to set it to false. Then when the user is basically sent or the password reset was sent successfully, we'll also tell the user. So we can say reset instructions sent to email address. Right. And then after that, also remember 
to set your show progress to false otherwise the user cannot log in afterwards so then the reset instructions will be sent to his email address he will get a link there and i'm going to show you now on back endless before we do this so let's quickly go to to back endless and uh, you'll see that if you go into schema here under your users table you will see that one of your columns should have the identity column ticked so in this case my email address is my identity uh, but you can also use a username for example instead of an email address as your identity but remember it must be non-null it must be unique and it will be indexed so you can change the values here and select some constraints and so forth in order to take another column as the identity but there must always be an email column and a password column even though you're not using the email as the identity so the email will in any case be used whenever we send here in android studio if i'm sending this my identity value here as the username then it will in any case go to the email address associated to that user and send out the password reset so uh, just make sure about this that your your identity value is set if you don't set it automatically your email will be your identity then also just remember you can go to users there and this is setting up the email template so if you go to users and you go to email templates this is where you'll set up your email templates for example a confirmation template for the the user that's uh, basically registering for the first time could get a confirmation template uh, where you can type whatever you want there you can also choose to not send an email for this event the user logs in for the first time there's the text that he will receive if he logs in for the first time if he registers for the first time uh, if he requests the password recovery so this is where we want to get now if the user requests password recovery we can say uh, you requested a password reset or something like that so you can have your subject for your message you can type your own subject there and then have your own mail there but you can see there it gives you a new password so this is one way of doing it so what we'll do is I'm gonna click on the bottom one you can see the bottom one gives you a link where you can change your password so for this one I'm gonna untick that one and then if I go back uh, let me just save at the bottom there save at the bottom and if i untick that one user request password recovery must then be ticked you can't have the uh, both of them and if i save you will see that that one is now red and this one is green so you can either request uh, a password recovery where it just sends you the password directly or you can send them a link and this is i think the best way where you send them a link then and they can change the password using the link so go and play around a bit with these email templates. Basically, if you want them, it should not be ticked. And if you do not want that specific email template, you can just switch it off here. Okay, so if we go back to Android Studio, this is basically what we're doing here. We're sending it to that email address and we're sending reset instructions. Unfortunately, that chuck at gmail.com does not exist. So I will get a problem there, but we can check it out quickly. So mine will probably give me a problem yes i'm going to say chuck at gmail.com which i do not think will exist and we can say uh, set the password so probably somebody else with with that chuck email address as as a, an email now and he will get his reset instructions and don't know what to, what he will do with it but in any case that is uh, basically just how your your reset password work if it's something that is not a website or not a uh, an email address let's see what it's going to say uh, error cannot perform unable to find a user with this email so just make sure that also if i type somebody here uh, let's say um peter at pollock.com or whatever then if i say password reset it will also tell me that this user does not exist user unable to find the user with that one because he's not registered online yet and then you can't send a password reset but for a user that is currently inside of your user table there so if i go back to my data and i can see then under my, under my users there's chuck uh, there's the password and there's everything so if the user exists on your table and you use a password reset 
it will send that email out. But if that user doesn't exist in your table, it cannot send out that email. Right, and that's then basically it for this video where we've seen how to log in a user and how to do a password reset. So for the next video, we'll quickly have a look at how to keep a user logged in so that you can take him directly to the main activity.